You know, I originally said I wasn't going to do this, but fuck it. People seem to enjoy me fucking with people with uh, certain decks. So let's get, let's get this started. Hey, yo, Alex, hit him with that for me, bruh. Don't forget to like and subscribe. What, what was that? Don't forget to like and subscribe. I don't, I don't think they heard you, bro. Hit the bell. I don't think they heard you, bro. Don't forget. Like and subscribe, man. I better do that. That's how you get more content. Hit the bell. And the bell. Ring the bell. Ring the bell. Bell. Click it. Be short, so I don't know his word. What's good, everyone? It's your boy Jakari uh, from Twisted Nightmare Gaming, and I'm back at you with a deck profile. I think this is the first one I've done in a few months because 90% of the videos I've done since probably January have been pack openings and unboxings and things along that nature. Um, yes, this is going to be Gravekeepers. There's a reason why I'm profiling this build of Gravekeepers. I've kind of done a version of this one before, but there's a reason. The reason why I'm doing it like this is because this is the uh, the, the deck that I actually took into uh, locals the week of my birthday while I was on vacation back uh, from the 20th to the 25th. Uh, I went to uh, locals uh, versus card shop up in uh, Oviedo. On um, both Monday the 21st and Wednesday the 23rd. Uh, and I actually do have the results from both days. Uh, I went 3-2 on Monday. I went 2-3 on Wednesday. Uh, again, y'all know I don't go into tournaments with the mindset of always winning. I go into it to fuck with people. Exactly like that. that, that that's the reason why this is called fucking with people. <laughs> or effing with people. Whichever way you want to say it, whichever way you want to do it. Um, so, we're going to get into the deck profile. Uh, if you can hear the fireworks in the background, uh, it is the 4th of July. I am shooting this about two weeks after I actually did the tournaments. Uh, so, like I said, let's get started. I do actually have a side deck constructed for it. Uh, Monday night, I did not have a side deck. So this is the exact build of the deck from Monday. And then I'll show you the key difference from Wednesday night. So one chief. Three commandant. Standard, what I normally run in that deck, in this deck. One headman, two heretic, again, standard, again, uh, I've told people before the reason why I only run one, one uh, headman is simply because I don't look to always summon headman, and when I was running three, I would end up with two in my hand, it would end up innately being a dead card. Two Oracle. There's a reason why I'm running two Oracle. I could realistically bump that to three. Two Recruiter. Move those over to the side there. Uh, reason why I'm only running two uh, Recruiter is because, again, I'm not looking to really. Normal, use my normal summon on recruiter. That's if I have no other choice. Uh, one spy. If I don't do three oracle, I could bump this up to two realistically. It is a target for a specific card in the deck. You probably already know what it is. Two spy. That's another reason why I don't run three headmen. It's because legitimately spy searches. Searches and special summons headman straight from the deck. So, and then the last gravekeeper monster, three spiritualists. You already know why she's in here. She's my main fusion, my main uh, way to fuse in this deck. 
and then the last six monsters are uh, three copies of Ash, the two souls, Damn it, souls, why are you stop cooperate, damn it. And the one apprentice. Uh you already know why I'm running souls and apprentice. Everything in here is spellcasters except for the ash. Um Ash was literally the the first night, the only hand trap I actually played. Uh there's a reason why at that was the reason why I don't end up normally playing hand traps in this deck. Uh it was a massive Negative to my hand most of the time because Ash with this deck clashed greatly. Uh, yeah, it works against my opponents, but if it's I end up having two ashes and my opponent's doing most of the shit from the graveyard, or and I don't have Necro on field or most of the shit from the field, and they special from their hand and they're not searching or they're not adding to their hand or anything like that, Ash is dead to me. Ash just sits there. I'm already locking the graveyard down for the most part. So, you know, Ash, like I said, Ash is a dead card. So, to the spells one double summon, one Steli, one HFD, two hidden temples. To lock my opponent out of special summoning is by far one of the funniest things in this world. So, why not run the Hidden Temples? Because, uh, you know, I'm not running into Gravekeeper Mirror matches. So, you know, it makes my life easy. The, uh, here comes the other way that I use the fusion in this deck, which is Magicalized Fusion. Yes, I can do it from the graveyard. You already know how I can. There are two major ways to do it. Necro Valley not being on the field. Chief being on the field, or both of them being on the field at the same time, because at that point, Necro Valley, my graveyard is unaffected by Necro Valley, so I can banish from my graveyard at that point. Monster Born, you know, the 3 3 combo, 3 Necro. Rethrow. Uh, the double summon effect, the immediate summon, uh, extra normal summon, did come into play a few times where I did not need to actually search anything. So that actually ended up being a godsend in, the, in one of one or two of my games on Monday night. Uh, and then the last three spell cards, two prosperity. One Regeki. Um, shocker. I don't always need to resolve Prosperity. The reason why I'm only running two is because I need to make sure I always have at least one copy of Supernat, one copy of Quintet, and one Link Monster. It doesn't particularly matter which link monster it is, but one link monster. So that's why that's the main reason for only running two and Regeki because it's Regeki. Um, for the traps, one tombs, one temple, which realistically I could bump to two because I really do love this card. Because people don't see, oh, I'm gonna pop your Necro Valley. Cool. Activate uh, Temple's effect. Put the Necro, reactivate the Necro Valley straight from my graveyard. So you effectively wasted a card for nothing. Uh, and then if you pop this, set a Necro Valley, uh, a, a Gravekeeper or a Necro Valley card. I don't normally resolve that effect very often. Oh, I could set one. Uh, one Necro Valley spell and trap. So, uh, temples, tombs, uh, uh, anything except for this. Yep, except for another one of these. So, I could actually realistically set a third copy of Necro Valley if they pop the second one and then pop this. Um, so, 
That's why I really do love uh, Necker Valley Temple. Uh, you know, more special summoning. Uh, Mosh it's Mosher Reborn for for Gravekeepers, unaffected by the effects of Necro Valley. Uh, it's just a trap. And then the judge, uh, the solemn package, two two strikes and a judge. Um, I keep it like this for a reason. I don't want to always see all three. Because I have opened a hand where I've had two strikes in a judgment. And where I've actually whiffed horribly. Where I had no monsters, no Necro Valley. My opening hand ended up being right of spirit, double strike, judgment, and tombs. This is after shuffling, power shuffling, power shuffling again, cutting, reshuffling, cutting, power shuffling, and cutting again. So, yeah. Um... Yes, uh, this deck can break. I do admit to that. I still wouldn't change anything about it because this is how I play the deck. Uh, for the extra deck, one sword, one luster, uh, the primary, one of the primary uh, targets for uh, prosperity. Yes, they are in the sleeves, and yes, they are double sleeved in the clear ones. So, y'all know I really like my brand new sleeves. One Underworld Goddess, and two Wee Witch. Y'all probably already know what the last six monsters are in this extra deck at this point. If you haven't guessed it yet, Triple Supernat. One tap. So, it like I said, as long as I can maintain having one super nat, one quintet, and any one of the link monsters, I'm perfectly fine. Truth be told, to be specific, um, it truthfully can it can be one wee witch for all I care. I just need one one link monster. That's not the one, not one of the link ones. But uh, all right. So, and saying that, going in through the tournament itself, if you haven't been on the Facebook page for it, um, from Monday night, I lost two one to Dragon Link. <laughs> Almost took him the time. Uh, stifled the absolute shit out of him. He actually commended me on stifling him as long as I did. I was like, well, yeah, Necro Valley's a hard counter to your deck. I, mean, I didn't go in this wanting to really care if I were went to sti stifle somebody's deck. It was just really, I went to fuck with people in that front. So, it happened. It is what it is. Um, round two. I won 2-0 against Morphtronics, and if you don't know who I was playing against, I happen to be playing against Puma. I absolutely hate playing my friends in tournament. It's most annoying because my deck, he does not like playing against this deck. I don't like using this deck against him, but we were in tournament, and that's kind of how it had to roll. Uh, round three... We found out one of the biggest hard counters to Necro Valley, and it's fucking Nightmare Unicorn. I lost 2 0 to Drytron, which this deck actually does stifle Drytrons greatly until they they spin the uh, they ne the Unicorn spin the Necro Valley. So there's really not much I can do at that point. Um, round four, I won because my opponent dropped. Because they were already uh, 0-2, I guess. Uh, and then, ironically enough, round five, I won. To I beat Dragon Link. Um, I believe it was. It actually was 2-1. Uh, 
Uh, that game almost went to time. Uh, in fact, I don't think I had a game that lasted shorter than 30 minutes. So, yeah. That was fun. Except for more, uh, unfortunately, except for Morphtronics, which, you know, hard counter. My, uh, we don't like playing each other when I use this deck. This deck is not fun to play against Morphtronics. Even if he builds the entirety of that of the synchro board, ending with uh, Savage and all the other shit, this deck's not fun to play against. Because I will bait your shit out. I mean, that's what I did. Um, the funniest thing that happened in round five was I resolved Quintet in game three. While he had a full board, I baited out Savage, I baited out Heavenly Spears. And he bounced Necro Valley, so he actually gave me the way to actually summoning Quintet. So what I did was, I ended up drawing um, Magic Lodge for turn. I had Throne in hand, I had Rageki in hand, and I had, I think, Headman? I don't fully remember at this point. It's been almost two weeks at this point. Um, but the end, the end play was, is I normal, um, I baited out Spears because he bounced, um, Spiritualist back to my hand. Which was a smart play because I did have a way of summoning both Quintet and um, Supernaturalist in the same turn. And I would have actually killed him outright for it. He actually scooped that. Actually, I, I, he literally admits I broke his spirit when I did the when I summoned Quintet for five. So I go Magicalize for five, five different five different spellcasters, five different names. All of them happen to be Gravekeepers. Um, because I did not see a Souls most of that game. Um, blew up his board. He chained to switching the, um, the Quintet. He chained Borsort, switching the Quintet to defense, which was hilarious, which still blew up his board. I activated the Necro Valley. He knew I had in hand, and it turned. He scooped after that. <laughs> uh, that was round five. I came in, I think, 11th. But 9, 10, and 11 all had the same record. And the person who came in 8th, well, uh, the only difference was is we were 3-2. He was 3-1-1. One, one. Uh, so the major difference from Monday to Wednesday was I took out Ash because Ash really only served me purpose. Uh, did its job only in one game, and that was game five uh, against Dragon Link. Actually, no, and in game one against Dragon Link. The other three games really didn't do much of anything. So I took Ash out, and then, um, and then my side deck ended up becoming the three Ash, three Nibiru. Three MST, three Super Poly, three Emperor. So, as you can see, I went into the second on Wednesday night, um, you know, with a decent enough side deck. I really only went into my side deck just to really go get the MSTs and the Imperms. Nothing else really went into the game. Uh, in anything in Wednesday night. Wednesday night, I went uh, X3. Round one, again. Round one, Puma. Puma, Puma gave me the win. Basically, it was one of those, he didn't want to play me, I didn't want to play him, he gave me the win. Round two, I got 2 would by... Dogmatica Shadal. And I stifled I stifled him for as long as I could. And didn't end too well because he started doing a lot of his 
Shadal effects when they got sent to Graveyard. But I do realize one key thing that makes that whole situation funny. If I ever get Shaman on field, I completely kill the if these cards are sent to graveyard effect because she negates all monster effects in graveyard when they activate. So it's I never got a shaman on field. He actually negated Necro Valley on field twice with I think uh F Cologne. So I popped it and activated temples and re I I activated temp I changed to the activation of F Cologne. Uh, activating uh, Necro Valley Temple. I popped it with uh, MST and then I reactivated it from my graveyard with Temple's effect. So, um, but then he negated it like three more times within the two games. So it was literally one of those. It That game lasted like 30 minutes. My shortest game was my round three loss to Plunder Patrol. This deck has a very hard time with Plunder. I realized that, and it actually bugged the fuck out of me. Uh, round four was probably my favorite duel of the two days, which was versus a completely tricked out and fun version of the Winged Dragon of Ron deck. Like, it, I did 2 on him. We actually had to replay game two because of situations that happened. And he scooped in game two simply because Quintet Magician is a thing and Quintet Magician can't be tributed. And he had Spear Bone. <laughs> so... Note to self, get Quintet Magician out on the field, and I can never be spare voted. <laughs> uh, that, was, that was actually kind of fun. That, that game was fun. Uh, that one almost went to time. Uh, and then round five, I lost to Alter Guys, which was my sh second shortest game. Uh, this deck also has a hard time with Alter Guys. I can stifle the graveyard, but... It's one thing I do know about Altergeist, because I do play Altergeist, is... May you seek on Phil is a bitch. So, yeah. Um, again, like I said, it was fun. Round two, for the first time in a long time, I've been at table one. That was only, and that was the loss to Dogmatical Shadal. It is what it is. Complaining, I didn't expect to be a top table at any point in the tournament in locals tournament. I, so you know that that was an accomplishment in itself because I again don't go into tournaments really looking to win. I just looking to have fun. Yes, I went into it with a no fun deck, but it's a no fun deck that I built the way that I wanted it to play. So uh. That's it for this uh, profile. That's it for this particular video. Uh, let me know what you think. Truth be told, if you are overly negative about me playing Gravekeepers and Locals, I don't care. Most people know me. Most people know I play Gravekeepers regularly, quite avidly. A lot of people was expecting me to go Necro Valley and then activate uh, uh, Royal Tribute, and I go, I don't want fucking Royal Tribute. I want monsters in hand. <laughs> why, why am I going to activate Royal Tribute when I want my monsters in my hand? Spiritualist is a thing. So, uh, But don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for all future notified, notified, ah, notifications. This is your boy Jakari from Twisted Nightmare Gaming signing off. Till the next one, folks.